Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Robles Designs. My name is Yasmin and I'm going to be showing you how I create blog graphics using Canva. A little bit about me if you don't know who I am. Again, my name is Yasmin. I'm the boss lady over at RoblesDesigns.com and I pretty much help your brand and website sparkle. So I've been working as a designer for about over five years now. I've worked with large companies, small companies, e-commerce to service based. And a little fun fact, I am a lover of Latin dance, salsa, bachata, and I'm currently taking lessons. So I am really really excited about that I have not stepped on anyone's feet so far and I think of that as a win <laughs> so let's get started um, on your Canva tutorial on how to create amazing blog graphics so here we are on my Canva account um, if you do not have one yet you can go to canva.com to get an account I have this is my free version so you're going to see everything that you get with the free Canva account and so I've all I, these are just past stuff that I have done and these are the templates that they have as you can see here and so we are going to create a blog a graphic for a blog post and they have a one here with a blog graphic that you can use they have more templates and really the, the thing that you're looking for is one that will fit your priorities and you're going to it's going to be better if you get one that is taller versus wider so there's that blog graphic Pinterest graphic tumblr graphic and you don't necessarily so if you, you're not doing it for your tumblr it doesn't matter if you want that sort of size and you can use it there's no right or wrong it should just be taller versus wider. So for example, if you have this Tumblr graphic that is 3000 by 1055, um, it is too wide and when it gets resized, it's going to look too small. And if you put it on Pinterest, it's just not going to have enough of that space. It's not gonna take up enough space to really make people look at it and click on it. So the ones I like using are either the blog graphic or the Pinterest graphic. Today we're just going to click on the Pinterest graphic one. And so here you can see you have your blank canvas and you have a few different templates that you can work off of. But try and stay away from these templates because unless you're going to use the same one every time, try to stay away from these because it's going to make your brand is going to look disjointed and it's not going to look the same every time. So the first thing that you're going to do is give it a title. I'm going to call it an example blog post. And then we are going to go to your uploads and see here I've already uploaded a few images and it's really easy um, click and drag so you can get your images drag them over on a PC I'm assuming you can still upload them by clicking here and then selecting images so now you can see the images that I have here and I use Canva for both Facebook and pretty much anything any light image images and graphics that I need to make um, but this is taller versus wider, so I'm going to look for images that are fit into that scheme so I don't have to zoom in too much. The problem with zooming in too much, for example, on this one, is that in case your image is not that big in real life, it's going to start looking pixelated. Now this one's okay, but it's going you run the risk of it having looked pixelated, and so you really just want to avoid that. I am going to actually pick this one. So it is the same uh, proportion. And I'm just going to click and drag to resize. So there is your very first um, graphic background. Now you can play around with it, you can leave it as is, but I always suggest playing around with it by making it either bigger or smaller and zooming in on one thing making the one thing one thing a focal point you don't have to stress about it too much though because it's still going to be a background image it's not supposed to be taking up too much space 
And so you have your background image and now you're going, what I like to do, this is one way of making your text stand out and it's a really easy way. You're going to take a shape and I like using this square, but you can use pretty much any shape, but I like to keep things simple. Again, simplicity is key. You don't wanna make things harder on yourself and you wanna make it as easy as possible and quick as possible for you to get something out the door. So I'm just, I just clicked on it and it landed there. I resized it and now I'm going to lower the transparency. I like typically about 80 because you can still see through it, but it's going to help your text stand out a lot. And so now we have that and we're just going to add a headline. I clicked on add headline and I'm going to say it's three tips for an amazing website. That is what my catchy headline is. So here is my headline. And if you look at it the way I just typed it in, it just ended up being there. It's that default font that it always goes to. But if I zoom out, and this is on my phone on Pinterest, it's going to look very, very small. It's not very readable, even though it is a thick, thickish font. And so this would be the actual size, and it's okay in the actual size. So what you need to do next is try and figure out First of all, what is your uh, your font, your you know your unique font that you need to um, have images that are really branded to you? And so you're going to go down um, and pick just pick out your font. If you don't have one yet, you can you just pick one that is close to what you like, and then recreate the images after a while after you have picked your perfect one. Mine is actually Playfair, and now you can do a few things. You can just cut it there and then have everything the same font size. So I put a line break. I'm just testing out the sizes of the fonts to make it fit nicely. So you could do it that way, but that's it still doesn't look like you had a designer do it. It doesn't look like you've put much thought into it. So what I like to do is, let me move this up is copy it and what I'm trying to do is separate it out into chunks where I can very easily start manipulating each letter and making it fit or each word making it fit. Now that I have my three pieces I'm going to start creating, making them larger and smaller and seeing what fits. So I want website to really stand out, everything to be aligned. So three tips and an amazing to be aligned with the edge of website. So there you have three tips for an amazing website because an amazing is not that important, but website and three tips are. And really I could do three tips in one line for an amazing in another line and then website on the last line. Um, we can play around with that, but this is really how I like to cut my um, my words and my sentences to, in order to make it all very cohesive and just make it look like it was actually thought about. Now, I usually keep it this way and then just add my logo, which I will show you. A logo or a call to um, call to my website. So today we're just going to add a logo. But if you wanted to do a call to your website, you would do a sub copy and you know put your website name and then move it down and that would be fine. But I'm going to just use the logo. Now let's say that you you have three tips for an amazing website but you also have a subtitle. Um, or a sub, not a subtitle, but a subheadline. So what I'm going to do is move this up a little bit, and then we're going to add a sub, a sub add a headline, subheadline. Um, and I'm actually going to make mine Helvetic-ish, which I believe is up here. And the reason I'm making it Helvetica is because it is 
going to be a lot easier to read, number one, and it's not going to detract from my main font. This is my personality brand font. We have three tips for an amazing website, my subheadline goes here, and then a logo. Now, the reason I, again, want to stress that I use the, a, a different, I'm using a different font because it's more easy to read the small, that's smaller that it is. It's also a sub headline, so it's not as important. It doesn't need to have that personality font that everything else has, that main font. And it is also going to just help make it look as if you really, really put thought and effort into your graphics. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm not going to leave it like this because this looks very silly. No matter what it said, even if it was very insightful, it would look like you just placed it there like it was forgotten. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it uppercase. Okay. And then we're going to make it we're going to take the text spacing and text spacing is awesome because you can if this was a one whole thing you can change the width of or the height of between each of the lines but we're going to use better spacing we're just going to make it the same width as website you can even kind of compare it by going there and I still want to make it smaller so it takes up less attention from everything else. Okay, I think that's good. So now I'm just gonna make sure, bring it down a little bit, make sure it's balanced on both top and bottom, that has enough space. And so there is your first blog graphic. Three tips for an amazing website. You're gonna have a subheadline here, and this is your call to your, your company. If you really wanted to have your website address here, Instead, we would take that out. I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to put my website here. And then just make it a font that is easy to read. Or if the background is not allowing you to make it easy to read, you can always make it small and put it here. Let's move everything else up a little bit. There. So now you have your, it's branded, it says it's yours, people can go to that site, they can read this and know what everything is about, and then if, they, if you zoom back, you can still read three tips for an amazing website. So that's perfect, this is a great, and it's not too long, so it's not some kind of um, graphic that is extremely long, but if you were to put it on your actual blog post, it will look very distracting. Or, But it is also not too short that when it gets onto Pinterest or anything like that, that it's just not going to show up properly. So now I'm going to show you how to add your colors to this, so in case you wanted to change everything up, I'm going to make another copy of it. I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to change up the background. Let's say I already posted that one image and I just really want, I have a new blog post image and I really want to use a different one. Let's say that one. I want a real, one with a really light background on it. Okay. And then I want to change the color of this background to my brand color. I know the hex code. So it's this six digits, six uh, letters and num and letters and or um, numbers and it has a hex code so a hex or pound sign or hashtag whatever you want to call it. And that is my brand font and then I want to make it again uh, non-transparent. It's hundred percent. And now it's not easy to read but I'm going to make it all the text white because readability is key. If you cannot read it, people, if they can, people can't read it, people will not go on your website. So this is another version, another way to make a great and easy to read uh, blog post image.
that can get pin put on Pinterest and still be great and easy to read from your phone or from your desktop, wherever that may be. And people understand the most important thing is that they understand what it is that the blog post is taking them to, what they'll learn, you know, what what why they should read. Now I'm going to show you how to download it. So you can click on download and you're going to either get a high quality PNG or a web JPEG. If this is only going to be used for web, I would just get the web JPEG. If this is going to be something where you're going to be printing it possibly or viewing it on extremely large screens versus smaller screens than a PNG, but you really wouldn't need one. Uh, the only other reason you might need a PNG is to have a clear background. So for example, if there for some reason you wanted cutouts and the rest of it clear, then you might want it that way. But right now we just would need a JPEG. So you would download that and it gives you this download. It tells you it's about to save and then it downloads it for you. So that is pretty much it. Other These other things are, you know, if you're going to print it, if you need a PDF for some reason, um, but really most websites, you would just need a JPEG. So that's it. That is how you create an amazing blog graphic. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions at all. Put them in the comments or um, shoot me an email at yasmin at roblesdesigns.com. That's R-O-B-L-E-S designs.com. You can also find my Facebook group, Kickass Lady Bosses on, on Facebook and um, where we get freebies. I do monthly website, uh, free website reviews and we just have loads of fun there. So feel free to hit me up with questions or anything that you might want to know. Thank you so much for joining me and have a perfect, perfect day. Bye-bye.